Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Say hello in the comments if you're joining me live. Um, so if you don't know me, my name is Jennifer Dunn, and I'm a nutritionist and a health and wellness coach. And I specialize in helping women balance their blood sugar without medication. So if that sounds good to you, if it sounds like something that's, um, that you're interested in, um, just stay tuned because um, I give you a lot of my tips and strategies that I use with my clients that can help you start to balance your hormones, balance your blood sugar if you are having blood sugar issues. Um, so just stay tuned and, and uh, watch my videos and read my posts uh, if you are interested in that kind of lifestyle. And I also have a um, free Facebook group if you don't know. It's called the Health Sweet Spot. And when we get done here, I can leave that in the comments if you're interested in joining us over there. It's a great group. I give lots of tips there and I, um, if you ask questions and things, I try to answer them the best I can. So if that uh, in interests you, you can look in the comments and get that link. Um, but anyways, guys, today I want to talk to you about how I use intuitive eating to know when and what to eat and how I can use that and also save room for treats when I want to like um, you know eating out and eating uh, eating things that I enjoy that aren't necessarily um, good for me or um, you know just more processed things um, I can teach you how to have that in your diet but still be healthy still have a ba balanced blood sugar and still lose weight or, um, you know, prevent weight gain, prevent blood sugar issues. So that's really what I'm all about. Um, so I want to share with you my last two weekends because I was thinking about this Sunday, um, how my last two weekends, how different they were um, and what the outcome of that was. So I want to share with you those two weekends, and I, I want you to guess why they had the outcomes they did. So the weekend before last, my husband and I went out for a steak dinner for our anniversary. And I had alcohol, I had bread, I had steak, baked potato, and dessert. I had it all. And I felt really satisfied, and I... Um, I was really in the moment. I mindfully ate. I really enjoyed every bite that I ate. Um, and I didn't finish everything, but I did order a lot of different things. Um, I didn't finish it all because I mindfully ate. I, I listened to my body. When it was full, I stopped eating, you know. Um, and I just really tried to enjoy and be in the moment when I was eating. Um, so that's one big clue. And the next morning, I wasn't hungry. Like, I was still full from eating all that food. I was full. I did not feel like I needed breakfast, so I didn't eat breakfast. I just waited until I got hungry, um, you know, around lunchtime. I think it was even like 1 or 2 o'clock before I even ate lunch because I just was, I was still satisfied from that dinner before and uh, so that was the weekend before last and then this past weekend I went to dinner at a pizza restaurant with my family for my niece's birthday and I ate salad pizza and a cupcake and um, you know I I ate and I talked and I um, I mean, I enjoyed the food, but my whole family was there. There was a lot of us there. I was catching up with everybody. Um, and the next morning when I woke up, I was hungry. I was really hungry. And so I ended up eating some eggs and sausage for breakfast. So based on those two weekends of mine, um, can you guess why I wasn't hungry for breakfast after my anniversary dinner? 
but why I was hungry for for breakfast after my niece's birthday dinner. Can anyone guess why? You can put it in the comments if you know why. So to me it was because like what I thought about on Sunday when I was thinking about the last two weekends I thought about okay I'm hungry th this morning because I ate pizza, salad, and cupcake. So that was a very carb-heavy meal, and I didn't eat a lot of protein. I don't even know if I ate any pizza, because I ate like the spinach pizza. So I don't even think I got any protein, uh, maybe with a little bit with the cheese, but I didn't have any meat. I didn't have much protein at all um, for that dinner. And I think that's why I was so hungry. Not I think, I know, because after I ate the, the eggs and bacon for, for breakfast the next morning, I felt great. Like I was able to be satisfied for a long time after that. So that's my answer. Like I, for the steak dinner, well, I had a lot of um, protein with my steak. So, um that kept me more satisfied and even though I did eat carbs and I ate fat and I ate a lot of different things it still kept me more satisfied because I ate some protein with all that and that's one tip that I have for you is if you are going to eat um, your carbs if you are going to eat if you know you're going to be eating a lot of carbs have some protein with that because that's going to lessen the effect on your blood sugar but it's also going to keep you more satisfied so you don't feel um, so you don't feel hungry right away right so that's the difference um, and so I know I say it all the time but your body will give you hunger signals and cravings until it gets enough protein until it gets the protein it needs it's going to give you hunger signals and you're going to be craving food until your body gets enough protein because that's what it's always after. It's always after protein. Um, it's always after protein so you will have cravings and you will be hungry until your body gets the protein that it needs. So let me know in the comments if this is making sense. Um, and the reason is, the reason for this is, is because every cell of your body contains protein. I don't know if you knew that, but every cell in your body needs protein and contains protein. We need protein in our diet to help us repair cells and make new ones. So, um, you know we're constantly turning over new cells new uh, we're repairing we're co constantly turning turning them over so we need protein to do that and specifically amino acids in your protein that's why we need protein because your body needs amino acids and there's like nine essential amino acids that um, your body can't make that it needs to, it needs you to consume through your food and if you don't then it um, it can result in different ailments like um, you'll have a, a low immune system like you'll get sick a lot even with like little colds and things like that you're that's that's a sign that your immune system is not as good as it should be if you're constantly like getting little colds and things and then it can also result in like digestive problems where you have like a um, a bad gut or you're getting a lot of like um, gut issues like uh, gas, bloating, um, heartburn, stuff like that. Um, that means you're, you, you may have an amino acid, uh, uh, you may be deficient in amino acids. Um, other problems that can happen from being deficient in amino acids is depression. And then the big one for me that I focus on a lot with like my clients and stuff is hormone imbalances, specifically insulin, you know, insulin levels. This is 
the number one indicator. I know if you are having insulin problems, you're probably not eating, you're under eating protein and you're overeating carbohydrates because this is what happens. Your hormones get imbalanced and specifically, especially for um, some of us who are more sensitive to carbs uh, and we need more protein, then, the, you know, these are the people that usually have blood sugar issues, insulin issues, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes. This is what happens. And so it's important that you get your amino acids. You need, um, you need these amino acids and your body, it needs them multiple times a day. It can't just, you can't just eat, if you're eating three meals a day, you can't just only eat protein once a day and expect um, your body to be okay with that because your body can only hold so much protein at one time. You know, it can only use so much at one time and then you need to replenish it. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. Let me know if, if um, what I just explained about the amino acids makes sense. And if you have any more questions about that, put them in the comments. I will um, try to answer them when I get through here. Um, so now that you know the reason that we need protein, I want to talk about the sources of it, good sources of protein, because, you know, I could say protein and you may not know what I'm talking about. Um, so foods that contain all nine essential amino acids are called complete proteins. And these are foods like beef, poultry, fish, eggs, soy, quinoa, and buckwheat. These are, these are foods that are um, complete, considered complete proteins, and you can get all of your non-essential amino acids from. Um, and then if you are vegetarian, then that's, um, we, you know, I could go into to that more, um, but I'm not going to do that today. Um, but it's combining certain foods to get your um, complete protein. That's what vegetarians and vegans have to do. You have to combine different foods together to get your amino acids, to get your complete proteins. So, um, and so, so we need to make sure we're getting, we're getting protein in our diets multiple times a day so our body can um, get enough to function and to repair. And so now that we know about amino acids, we know why we need protein. I want to talk about the other lesson um, that I thought about when I thought about these last two weekends. So the other two things that um, I want to focus on uh, in these stories is intuitive eating and like mindfully eating, listening to your body. That's basically what intuitive eating is and mindful eating is. Intuitive eating is like knowing when and what to eat, like listening to your body and what it's craving and what it's what you feel like it's needing. And um, like crave, um, your body should be craving like um, carbs, fat, and protein. And when you when you give it these whole food sources of these macronutrients, the carbs, fat, and protein, then um, your body should be satisfied. If you feel like, um, you know, that's what it's needing. But if you're having cravings for like donuts, french fries, potato chips, then that's something else going on. That's either a habit that you've you've had and that so your body's kind of addicted to that food and it's craving that because you have a habit or an addiction um and other reasons you could be craving the more processed food is just because um just because you know you're used to you're used to having that every day you know i guess like a habit um but anyway so um, intuitive eating is just like listening to your body and then mindful eating is being mindful while you're eating during your meal are you being mindful are you 
um, watching TV? Are you scrolling on your phone? Are you um, fighting with the kids? You know, if you're if you're doing any of that, like if you're doing anything that's going to distract you, then you're not going to mindfully eat. And when you don't mindfully eat, when you don't like sit down and really just focus on that meal and eating it and the way it tastes and the flavors and how it feels in your mouth and all that kind of stuff, if you're not doing that, then you're not going to get as satisfied. You're going to still be looking after you eat, you're still going to feel like, oh, I still want something because you're, you didn't mindfully eat. So, um, so you can look for signs of physical hunger and eat accordingly. So I'm going to give you a couple tips. Um, so I don't, what I mean by this, by looking for signs is I don't just, like I didn't just wake up the other day and say, well, it's breakfast time. It's time to eat. No, I listened to my body. And one weekend it was hungry, like one Sunday it was hungry. And one, one Sunday it wasn't hungry. And that was based on what I gave it the night before. So we have to get in tune with our body and, and its signals to know what we need to do, whether we need to eat, whether we need to fast, you know. Um, and I don't, really, I don't really call it fasting because I'm just... I really just eat when I'm hungry and I don't eat when I'm not hungry. That's it. That seems simple enough, right? Like I don't have a name for it. I don't say I'm fasting. I don't say I'm going to fast this long or whatever. I literally just eat when I'm hungry and I don't eat when I'm not hungry. And that's what I try to do. And, and when I know I have like a dinner coming up that, you know, like my anniversary dinner, I make sure I'm hungry. I don't eat at two o'clock if I know I'm going to dinner at 630 or whatever. I make sure I'm good and hungry. And the same for when I went out, I knew my niece's birthday, we're, we were going to that pizza place. And so I wanted to be hungry. Um, I don't want to eat food when I'm not hungry, so I make sure I plan accordingly. I make sure when I know I have a dinner coming up or any kind of event, I make sure I'm going to be hungry so so I can enjoy uh, that food like a normal person. And that's another thing. Like I knew all week long I was going to be going out for pizza that, that Saturday night. So I set up my week accordingly, you know. I, I made sure that I ate very healthfully and, and I ate a lot of whole foods and I didn't eat a lot of processed foods. And then if I do that most of the week, then I can enjoy that meal with my family. I can eat like a normal person. So that's kind of the techniques that I use um, in my life to plan for these events, to be able to eat like a normal person when I go to a restaurant. Because who wants to be that person um, that's always on a diet that says, I can't have that, it's not on my diet. I can't have that, it's not on my food plan. No, we don't, I don't like food drama. I don't like getting into all that. I, I just like um, being a normal person when I'm around my friends and family. When I go out to eat, I don't want to be that girl on a diet or that girl on a food plan that has to eat exactly what it says. No, I just can't live like that. I don't know about you guys. Um, anyway, so let's talk about the different questions you should ask yourself when you want to eat, okay? So these questions really helped me when I was starting my intuitive eating journey and, and mindfully eating. And um, these, these questions will help you get back to um, listening to your body, to getting more in tune with your hunger cues instead of ignoring them. Because when we diet and when we follow food plans, we're essentially ignoring our body. We're ignoring our, our hunger cues. We're ignoring what our body is um, telling us it needs. That's what we're doing when we're dieting and when we're following a specific meal plans or food plans. Um, so I want to get that point across. And this is why so many of us don't know how to listen to our body and we don't, we are not in tune with 
what our body needs and the hunger cues because we've done so much of this dieting and um, listening to what other people say we should do. That's exactly why we don't know how to do this. So what you have to ask yourself is, am I hungry? Or am I thirsty? Am I sad? Am I stressed? Because sometimes we can make mistakes um, we can mistake emotional hunger for physical hunger, or we can just tend to eat out of habit. So we always need to ask ourselves if we get the urge that we want to eat, we need to ask, am I really hungry? Or am I thirsty? Or am I stressed? Am I bored? What, why am I wanting to eat? So we really need to, to be honest with ourselves. Are we really hungry? or are we just bored? Are we just thirsty? Um, and that's another tip that I just thought of. I always have a water cup with me. I have one, I keep one in my office. I keep one in my bathroom. I keep one uh, in the kitchen, in the refrigerator. I have water at all the different areas that I use around my house. I keep water there because it reminds me, oh, you need to drink your water. You need to drink your water. It, it's really just like a trigger, like a, um, I see the water cup and then I know, okay, I need to drink some water so I don't get thirsty because you don't want to let yourself get thirsty because that is one thing I think a lot of people um, mistake. They think that they're hungry and they're actually really thirsty. They're dehydrated and that can make your stomach growl. It can give you a headache. It can make you feel uh, sluggish, lethargic, if you're not getting enough water. And, um, and that's one thing I think of. I worked with nurse practitioners for a long time at one of the clinics I worked at. And that was one of the biggest things that I noticed with them is they did not drink water because they were so used to um, not being able to use the restroom, you know, and so they just got in the habit, like if they worked at hospitals or real busy places, um, they would get in the habit of just not, not drinking anything all day because they didn't have time to go to the restroom, which is super unhealthy. Like I would always, um, you know, try to, to like just, uh, I would just try to comment and say, hey, I haven't seen you drink any water in a while. You want me to get you a bottle of water or something like that? I would always try to encourage them to drink water because they would just, it was just a habit that they had from nursing school and from, you know, being busy working at a hospital and stuff. And so um, that was one thing that I really noticed with, with the nurse practitioners that I worked with and the um, like physician assistants and things. Um, so the next question to ask yourself is, do I have physical signs of hunger? So we just talked about that a little bit. Um, is my stomach growling? Do I have low energy? Am I shaky? Do I have a headache? Um, am I having trouble focusing on my work or what I'm doing? All of those can be signs of hunger, of like physical hunger. So if you're, um, if you know that you've been drinking your water, um, then it may be that you're hungry. So we need to ask ourselves, am I, do I have physical signs of hunger? And then the third question to ask yourself is, um, when was my last meal and did I give my body what it needed? So that's a really important question to ask um, because if you just ate an hour or two ago, you shouldn't be hungry as long as you gave your body some, some nourishment, some nutrients. Now, if you just downed a bag of potato chips, then yes, you are probably gonna be hungry in an hour or two because you didn't give your body anything but empty calories. There was no nourishment in that. There was no nutrients in that bag of chips. So, um, 
you know, if you, if you ask yourself that and it's been four hours since you ate or five hours since you ate, then you might be hungry. But if you just ate an hour or two ago and you're hungry, then that tells you, that's a clue that, okay, I need to pay more attention to, did I get enough protein? Did I get enough healthy fat? Did I get some healthy whole food carbs? You know, um, did I give my body what it needed to function, you know, and, um, and all the macronutrients, the macronutrients are, um, carbs, fat, and protein. And when I say that, um, it all, macronutrients depend on your particular lifestyle. Like, are you more active? Do you, are you not active? Do you sit a lot? Um, do you exercise? Are you an athlete? Um, also, like genetics can play a small role in that. Like I said earlier, some people are like if blood sugar issues run in your family, that can um, that can be uh, your carb. The, your amount of carbs that you need can be dependent on that. Like you may be more carb sensitive. You know how like you hear people are more salt sensitive, that can be like a genetic thing. You, some people are more salt sensitive. Some people are more carb sensitive. You have some that are both, you know, and they have to be really, um, you know, really uh, intuitive about that and intuitive about how, how much salt they're having, how much, how many carbs they're eating. Um, so, and then, you know, if you don't know that, then you can always get blood work done at the doctor, you know, and, and figure that out. Um, but anyway, so when you ask yourself, what was my, when was my last meal and did I give my body what it needed? That's, um, that's going to tell you like, uh, if you need to change things up. So if you're, even if you're eating like whole foods, if you're eating like a, a rice or a baked potato, a loaded baked potato or um, lots of fruit or lots of vegetables, but you're not getting much protein or much fat in there and you're still getting hungry like every couple hours, then that tells you that you need to change some things up. You might need to lessen your carbs and eat some more healthy fats, eat some more protein, and then see how you feel. Like after you do that a few days, see how you feel. Are you less hungry? Are you more satisfied? So these are the kind of things that we can ask ourselves and we can experiment with to find our perfect plan, to find what our body needs and, and um, the amounts of, of macronutrients it needs. So I hope all that makes sense. Um, let me know. Let me know if you have any more questions about that. Um, so this week, I want you to start asking yourself these questions, these three questions. Am I hungry? Do I have physical signs of hunger? Or, and when was my last meal? And when did I, well, and did I give my body what it needed? So ask yourself that. And these questions will help you to start listening to your body and will eventually help you feel more satisfied. And when you eat, um, when you eat these foods that you, uh, that your body is needing and you feel more satisfied, you'll have less cravings. So it all goes hand in hand. It's a cycle, you know? So, and if you are interested in diving deeper into intuitive eating and your habits, um, leave the word habit in the comments and I will DM you with more information about my coaching programs. If you're interested in that, just leave habit in the comments. And anyways, guys, that's all I have. And I will see you next time. Bye.